In this second video of the series, I walk through the steps of configuring my first ever network attached storage or NAS in the form of the Ugreen DPX2800. This is the second of three videos explaining my journey as I choose the hardware, set up my NAS and create my own private media server to stream my own movies and TV shows. Now let me explain how to initialize the NAS and choose the settings for the first time. Once installed, you'll need to set up the DPX2800 either using a web browser, the Windows app, or even a mobile phone. There are already comprehensive resources online to help you get set up from Ugreen, which you can review at the URL available in the description. The basic process is that you want to establish access to your NAS and start configuring your storage. In my example, I'm going to be combining both hardware drives I bought using RAID 1 so that I have a complete backup of all my data. One drive will be a carbon copy of the other one, so that in the event of one drive failing, I'll still be able to recover all my important files. To help contextualize the process for newcomers to NAS drives like myself, it's best to think about the NAS as a separate computer that you have to use your home network to control. This is different to accessing mass storage devices you usually plug into your computer via USB ports and access through Windows Explorer, at least on initial setup. I'll explain how to view the contents of your NAS via Windows Explorer later on. The first step is to find the NAS on your network using another device. While you can use the app on the phone or tablet to bind or connect the NAS to your network for access, I chose to use my PC. The beginner's guide on Ugreen support pages on the website includes details on how to set up via your phone if you wish to do it that way. On your computer, using your browser, the first thing you have to do is navigate to find.ugnas.com and your computer will search for the NAS on your home network automatically. Click connect and you'll be guided through the initialization process. You'll be prompted to give your NAS a name, which can be anything you like. You then need to create a username, again it can be anything you like, and finally you need to create a password. It's worth noting that this password is for local access to the NAS. If you're intending to access the NAS remotely via mobile or another device, you'll need to create a Ugreen Cloud account with separate credentials. They are two separate sets of username and password from each other. The next screen will help you create an account, log into your existing account or skip for now. Your NAS will now take a few minutes to install the necessary files for the Ugreen OS and once complete, you'll be presented with a desktop on the NAS, which resembles a Windows desktop that you're probably already familiar with. On first use, you'll be given a quick tour of the main functions of UGOS before being prompted to start your storage configuration. With the DPX2800, you'll only see options for certain types of storage called RAID 0, RAID 1, JBOD, or BASIC. If you're like me, you'll have a rudimentary understanding of how you can protect your data from being destroyed in the event of something horrible happening to your computer. The most common solution is to use RAID, or Redundant Array of Independent Disks. It's described as a data storage visualization technology that combines multiple physical data storage components into one or more logical units for the purposes of data redundancy. In basic terms, you copy your drive onto separate drives so that in the event of one drive dying or malfunctioning, you can still recover your lost data via the remaining operational drive or drives. What's more, in some instances, depending on the hardware, you can simply replace the faulty drive and immediately restore your data again securely without significant inconvenience. There are several versions of RAID with varying levels of sophistication, but most importantly, the DPX2800 supports the version of RAID that I'm most interested in, and that's RAID 1. RAID 1 consists of data mirroring. All the data copied to one drive is copied identically to another drive. The drawback to RAID 1 is there is a slight speed cost as copying data twice takes longer. Without getting into the specifics, choosing another RAID variation might be faster, but the drawback is that you'll need more disks. I chose RAID 1 to protect my data from failure. You'll then need to choose the drives for your configuration. At this point, I left the SSDs unchecked as I'll be using it for caching and activate the option later. 
On the next screen, you can set the maximum storage you want to use from the available capacity. In my case, it's 8 terabytes minus the necessary space for system files. You will then be asked for the file system preference. As a quick cheat note, ext4 is the older Linux filing system, and the other option is btrfs or betterfs, which is the recommended file system for disk and volume management. The next screen just confirms your choices, and then you'll see a reminder that the process of setting up real RAID configuration will wipe the drives. The process will take some time to complete. In my own case, it was over eight hours, so I left the NAS running and came back the next day. Unlike hard drives, which have physical moving components, solid state drives, commonly referred to as SSDs, do not, and store data on chips. Hard drives require moving the head assembly unit to see the data on the disk inside. The very process of seeking and accessing data on a disk is limited by the speed of the moving parts. SSDs by comparison can be more than twice as fast, if not faster, depending on the quality and the size of the drives, because there are no moving parts. While the DPX2800 does enable the ability to add two NVMe drives as complementary extra storage, what the DPX2800 and other modern NAS drives enable is the use of NVMe drives as a way to quickly access your most common data by caching it, or temporarily staging it for quick access. The data is prefetched and stored on the NVMe instead. Some clever calculations and processes are required by the NAS to anticipate the data you're seeking to cache the data, but the whole process is invisible and seamless to the user. With the NVMe caching, you get the benefit of the SSD's lightning speed, but the cost saving of having the bulk of your less accessed data on cheaper hard drives. As with other NAS drives, if you install two NVMe SSDs, you can also write to the NAS faster, using the second SSD to cache incoming data before being written to the target hard drive. While caching will probably be only very useful in very demanding environments where you're continually sending data to your NAS, it might not be appropriate for everyone. Once your NAS has finally completed configuring RAID, you'll want to make sure that you can access it via Windows Explorer. First go to the NAS UGOS and navigate to Control Panel, then File Service, and then the SMB tab. Toggle on to enable SMB service. Service Message Block, or SMB, enables file sharing, printer sharing, network browsing, and inter-process communication over a computer network. To make the NAS appear under Network in Windows Explorer, you must first navigate on your NAS to Control Panel, File Service, Advanced Settings, and then toggle on Enable WSDD2 service. Your NAS will now appear under Network with the designation as a computer and your NAS's name. Now you'll be able to use Windows Explorer to access and move files just as you would normally on your computer. On first connection, you'll be asked to re-enter your login credentials for the NAS to gain local access. Again, this is different to your uGreen Cloud credentials as mentioned earlier. To begin with, you'll only see the initial personal folder you created as part of your initialization. You can't create new folders at the root of the NAS drive in Windows Explorer. You have to create those folders on the NAS directly. To create more folders, you'll need to connect your NAS via your browser or your desktop app. Navigate to Files, and then Personal or Shared Folder, where you can create new folders. These new subfolders will be accessible via Windows Explorer, and you'll have the same editing and folder controls you normally experience, and you're all set. Your NAS is also accessible remotely when you're away from your home or office. To configure remote access to your NAS for convenient file sharing and management, you'll need to switch on a setting and sign up for uGreen Link, which is uGreen's cloud service. You may have already signed up for uGreen Link as part of your initialization process, but it was optional. If you haven't already signed up, visit the official uGreen website and then the download section. You can then download the desktop uGreen app as part of your installation you'll also need to make sure that remote access is turned on on the NAS itself. Using the UGOS interface, go to the control panel and then the device connection. Then remote access and toggle on the option for uGreen Link remote access. Beneath this, you'll see the uGreen Link ID and web URL that you can use to access your NAS from any browser using your uGreen Link credentials. In my next video, I explain how to set up your own private media streaming server using the uGreen NAS and all the additional steps you'll need to start enjoying your content on your phone, smart TV, or computer. 
Thank you for watching and as always it would be great if you were to like this video and subscribe to my channel for more content on personal technology and the connected home.